That's all I need to see. Um, the way she said domesticate you. I could tell, I could tell right now this isn't bluegrass. Hey folks, how are you doing today? I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. If you're like the rest of the bluegrass world, you probably saw my video on Billy Strings ever growing popularity and some of the undeserved negative reviews he's getting from longtime bluegrass fans. In part of that video, I joke about how big bluegrass introduction or recruiting events happen like Oh Brother Where Art Thou? And the community likes to turn around and say, that's not bluegrass. Bluegrass. This leads to that kind of old man gatekeeping that bluegrass has become unfortunately known for. It's sort of the no true Scotsman, etc. You know what I'm talking about. Now in the comments of this video, I saw a lot of things. But one of the things I saw was people arguing about if things like Oh Brother Where Art Thou were bluegrass or not. And I thought that was really interesting. By the way, I don't personally think that the Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack is a bluegrass record. Uh, it defies classification by how broad the included material is. Gospel, folk, uh, field haulers, blues, early country, fiddle tunes, and furthermore, the instrumentation and play styles included therein, acapella vocals ranging from solo, trio, quartet, and larger, uh, blues guitar, country guitar, old time fiddle, frailing banjo, slide guitar, etc. It's simply too varied for it to all fall under the bluegrass umbrella. However, many of the songs included in that soundtrack are bluegrass standards, and some of them are even performed by famous bluegrass artists, just not exclusively in a very bluegrassy way. This works for the film because they're trying to paint a picture of early American music. They're not trying to really be sticklers about genre. But it does beg the question, what is bluegrass specifically? By the way, my YouTube members at the Billy Club tier voted on this video topic. If you'd like to participate in that voting process, just hit the subscribe and then the join button down below. Thank you so much, Billy Club members. Now asking that question, what is Bluegrass is kind of an impossible question, and I thought it would be kind of an amusing one to try to answer. This isn't meant to be super serious, but I do think it'll leave you more educated afterwards. So I made a system in about 20 minutes, and I want to test it on some of the most viewed videos when you search bluegrass on YouTube. This system is just for fun, once again. It's not really meant to reflect on the quality of the music, just the inherent amount of bluegrass traditionalism present in the recording, as judged by an arbitrary set of standards. Imagine it this way, we're not asking if it's good pizza, we're asking if it even qualifies as pizza to begin with, and we're using a crappy homemade rubric to test for that. Furthermore, this video is kind of a commentary, not only on how degraded the term bluegrass has become, but on the negative effects of traditionalism. Because if none of these bluegrass adjacent stepping stones existed, then people would never be able to rediscover the history of bluegrass for themselves. Innovation is key in keeping a genre alive, but pedantic traditionalism makes for fun YouTube videos. Time to get into how we're grading these videos. <laughs> this is long and boring, so I guess you can skip it if you want to, but the devil is in the details with something like this. If you wanna know what traditionally defines bluegrass as a genre, I'm about to tell you. Here are the four main categories that are gonna be on our bluegrass report card. Instrumentation, play styles, repertoire, and since we're judging videos, presentation. Instrumentation is simple. The father of bluegrass, Bill Monroe, and his band, the Bluegrass Boys, set the standard that everyone would follow, and they set that standard in 1945. So anything before that is probably pre-bluegrass or old time or brother duets, American traditional, something else. And that lineup is simple. The lineup is bass, guitar, mandolin, banjo, and fiddle. But thanks to Josh Graves' inclusion in Flat and Scruggs back in 1955, we'll also be including the dobro as an optional instrument. So that's six total. Now, one of the questions you might be asking is about drum sets. Can drums be in a bluegrass band? Now, drums have made appearances in bluegrass bands, but they aren't the norm. and the community is rather anti-drums, but we do make exceptions for legacy acts that include a single snare drum, like the Osborne Brothers. So I will say that drum sets are a point deduction and a single snare drum is neither a positive or negative addition. Spoons, washboards, tambourines, etc. any auxiliary percussion is a point deduction. They really don't have a place in the bluegrass tradition. They certainly did exist in the South and they were used as ad hoc percussion instruments, but never post 1945 as a part of the more formalized bluegrass, if you will. 
I don't like using that word formalized, but you get my point. We'll, we'll cover vocals and play styles. We'll talk about that later. Speaking of play styles, this section all has to do with how these instruments are played. So guitars should be larger bodied. They should be acoustic. They should be played with a flat pick for lead or a, a thumb pick is acceptable for rhythm thanks to the Lester flat loophole. But finger picking is a point deduction. And I know all of you Doc Watson fans are out there thinking, what? How can he do that, you know? But Doc Watson wasn't really strictly a bluegrass musician and he played some finger style and, well, quite frankly, shame on you for trying to bottle up Doc like that. He played a lot of different stuff, not just bluegrass. Of course, we also expect to see boom chuck style rhythm and standard tuning. Drop D is sometimes acceptable. More decorative forms of rhythm are allowed, but idiosyncratic amounts of upstrokes, a la Wonderwall, will not be tolerated. Mandolin should be played with a flat pick on an F style or reluctantly an A style. No bowl back mandolins, no oval hole mandolins. That is not bluegrass. We expect to see a chop style rhythm with few, if any, open chords. Uh, in leads, we expect to see classic bluegrass language such as double stops, drones, tremolo picking, etc. No six course mandolins, all in standard tuning. Exceptions will be made for get up John tuning, let's say. <laughs> Banjo should be played in Scrug style on a five string resonator bluegrass banjo. Uh, pick should be worn on the thumb and the index and middle fingers. Uh, rolls and single string are both acceptable. Frailing long neck banjos and no finger picks, that's all a point deduction. That is not bluegrass. Dobro or resonator guitars, as some pedants will argue, should be played with three finger style and a steel slide, almost always in GBD, GBD, although we can make exceptions for hip shots on the rare case that we see one in one of these videos. Oh, here's a, here's another little fun one. Uh, bluegrass bass, uh, upright is preferred, but uh, electric is also acceptable. And electric upright is fine as well for ease of touring. The thing is electric basses, uh, they can't be a point deduction because at this point they've been used in bluegrass bands for like 50 years. And if you don't agree on this point, I would ask you is someone like Dole Lawson bluegrass? Bloody hell, some thoughts can be so I think we can all agree he is bluegrass and he's used electric basses forever. Not in every lineup, but in quite a few lineups. So we expect to see alternating like root fifth bass lines with some deviation into walking or like boogie woogie, but overuse of walking bass is a point deduction. Bluegrass fiddle should be played on the shoulder, not in the lower old time position. Um, bow hold doesn't really matter. There's so much variation in bluegrass bow hold that uh, I can't put a restriction on that factor. No vibrato, uh, backup should be done in a chop style or through accompanying lines. The Cajun shuffle backup, that's gonna be a point deduction. It muddies up the position of the rhythm section and this is a point I will not be swayed on. <laughs> and now we <laughs> enter this big world of how vocals are done. And it's a can of worms. Vocals can be done as solo, duet, trios, and quartets, but they all have specific kind of standard ways that it's done. So how these stacks work is actually really important. So if the vocal is a duet from lowest to highest, we expect to see the lead vocal and then a tenor vocal. If the vocal is a trio, we expect to see baritone on the bottom, lead in the middle and tenor on top. Or in the case of the Stanley Brothers, this is an optional, uh, you can have the lead vocal and then a tenor and then a high baritone. In a quartet, we expect to see bass, baritone, lead, tenor. And that's really kind of reserved for gospel tunes. We don't see it a lot outside of gospel music. The accent is not required. Please don't fake an accent. No vibrato. Instead, it's more of a really straight tone. Um, usually no like overt gruffness. Uh, people can have just naturally gruffer voices, but uh, overdoing it certainly is not very bluegrass. We expect the high, lonesome, pure kind of sound. Now, everything I just said generally applies to groups that are either all men or all women. If you have mixed gendered groups, it becomes a little more interesting because natural vocal differences. Women can normally sing higher than men can. So that means that if you have a man singing lead, a woman can sing the tenor part above that because they naturally have higher voices. Makes sense. If you have a woman singing lead, you probably need another woman to sing the tenor part because women can sing higher than other women. It's kind of tough to find a dude that could sing that tenor part way up there. The only combination that I think the community really doesn't like 
and they don't like it for a logical reason. In fact, let me say, for all these stacks, we've had a lead vocal and then a tenor vocal above it. So you can imagine if we had a woman singing lead, and then we had a guy that was trying to sing this tenor part above it, but he couldn't get there. So instead, he put the tenor part below. That's what we don't like. We like lead with tenor above instead of tenor below with lead above that. Now, repertoire is easy because bluegrass is a genre of standards just like jazz. So you're either singing one of those standards or you're writing new material that's in the same vein as the standards. Idiosyncratic song choice or idiosyncratic originals, they got to be a point deduction. And this is probably one of the most lenient categories, by the way, because I think creativity and songwriting and arranging should be applauded. Like I said earlier, innovation is at the heart of this. That's how the genre moves forward. But for instance, I think that just pointlessly changing the genre of a song, like a cover song, normally gives you subpar results. For instance, think of all the like acoustic covers of rap songs. It kind of like undercuts the original because the new cover is just all about the novelty of it being a rap song on an acoustic guitar, which isn't really that interesting. So just randomly swapping genres, I don't think makes for a great bluegrass song. You feel me? As far as presentation goes, stereotypical hillbilly wear is a point deduction. Bluegrass music is a city interpretation of a country tradition. These are all country boys that moved to the city for work and ended up playing on radio stations and inventing bluegrass. That doesn't mean you have to wear a suit. I mean, street wear is also acceptable. It's 2022, I get it. I'm not saying you have to dress up in a suit, but the act of dressing up like a stereotype of what, you know, Yanks think hillbillies look like that's distinctly not bluegrass. It never was part of the tradition, and I hope it never is part of the tradition, because quite frankly, it's kind of offensive. <laughs> I think I think most good old boys can laugh about it, but th that isn't bluegrass. <laughs> All right, so that is our whole system. Each category will be rated out of 10, and for the categories of instrumentation and play style, we'll be rating each instrument separately, and we'll be adjusting for how many instruments you have in your recording. So for instance, if you only have four bluegrass instruments, that category will be graded out of 40 points. At the end, I also reserve the right to give a 10% bonus to anyone who I think has their heart in the right place. So for instance, you know, folks who can play bluegrass but are doing something weird for fun, they'll get that 10% that bonus. It's my way of gaming the system a little bit. I've had someone <laughs> go in an incognito tab, go to YouTube and search for some of the most viewed videos that come up when you type in bluegrass. And uh, they've, they've set them up here in a, in a Chrome tab for me and I'm gonna go through them and we're gonna write them using our system. All right, so the first video we have is What If Guns N' Roses Want Bluegrass? Let me tell you, the title does it inspire confidence. Here we go. I already have to pause it. <laughs> I already have to, we already can score some things. <laughs> so I can say right away that that tiny guitar is not a large bodied acoustic. We'll, we'll give that like a two, at least you have a guitar. Play style, he's already finger picking and that I said that would be a point deduction. Let's give him a two as well. I do see a bass already. The bass is present. It is sort of an electric acoustic bass. You know what? We're gonna be real generous because this video is gonna need it. We're gonna give him a 10 already. Okay, <laughs> so it, it sounds like we got a bass drum already. It's like this guy's at a drum set and he's got a cymbal coming out of his head. That's that's a negative 10 for uh, the flagrant use of a drum set. <laughs> this is so evil. I don't like this now. I feel like a bad guy. <laughs> that four on the floor bass drum thing is such like a, like a, a pop music cliche, right? You don't even hear it in pop songs anymore. It's so cliche. So to hear it in a bluegrass record is is lame. It should just be the bass guitar doing that job. It's silly. What's this thing on the left? Is that a banjo? Oh no. Okay, so we have we have a banjo present. A banjo does exist here, so we should give some small point value. We will want to give give a two, but it is a six string banjo. There's no way he's wearing finger picks. He's got a single pick, right? This is the stack that I was talking about where you have a male singing lead and a woman singing the tenor part. That works out great. It looks like he's about to flat pick this banjo. So we're gonna take this banjo and, oh, you know, I hate to do it, but flat picking a six string banjo, we're gonna give, how about negative eight points? 
We could have gone full negative 10 because it is a sin, but the only way it could have been worse if it was an electric banjo. You know, I understand what they're doing. They're trying to make bluegrass and they had like 30 seconds to look up what bluegrass is. Oh, hey, guy with the symbol on his head picked up a mandolin. Okay, he's got a mandolin, but he's got a drumstick taped to the end of it. Uh, so we're gonna say, maybe we'll give him a three just cause I'm, I'm into that for some reason. I don't know if he's really doing a chop, so we can't, we can't give him a 10 out of 10. Let's give him, I mean, he looked like he was playing some close position chords, right? I mean, I feel like I only hear three vocals, but I see like four people singing. I think I might hear an idiosyncratic uh, you know, bass on that. That's only for gospel tunes. Let's give them maybe a four on the vocals. I don't like some of the gruffness, but at least the stacks work out. The bass on a pop tune, it's not really a bluegrassy thing to do, but, but you know, I get it. The hand claps too. Oof, no hand claps. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about the repertoire. This is, of course, not a bluegrass song. Do I think it's a song that could make an interesting bluegrass song? I don't, it, this is kind of what I was talking about in that section where I was like, hey, just genre swapping doesn't really make interesting covers, right? It needs to be more transformative than just a genre swap to have a really compelling cover. I'm just, I'm not gonna give them negative points, although I probably should, I'm just gonna give them a zero. And presentation, the presentation isn't my absolute favorite, but uh, the way this video is filmed and the way they're dressed and everything, I see no overalls. They weren't worried about actually making bluegrass here. They just did something that they thought was close to bluegrass and they put bluegrass in the title because what if Guns N' Roses want bluegrass? would generate clicks, which means they receive a final bluegrass rating of 25% bluegrass, um, which is honestly quite a bit higher than I thought they would get. That is an F. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just not bluegrass and you're contributing to the degradation of the term for clicks, which is fine. I understand that that's how YouTube works. I'm not gonna complain about that. <laughs> This is when people are gonna hate me. I'm gonna get canceled for this. I already, I already know this song, obviously, and I know that it's got a ton of views. These guys, let me just say right off, right off the top, I am gonna give them my bonus points because I have seen these guys play bluegrass, and there is some like you know three finger rolls and some mandolin chops, some other things going on there. This song, I just don't think features many of those elements. It's kind of a stripped arrangement, which unfortunately means it's gonna score a little bit lower. But let's let's do it anyway. All right, so for the sake of our arbitrary test here, and they do get an other instrument deduction. They have a cello. Cello appears in quite a few like bluegrass adjacent bands, but it's not strictly speaking a bluegrass instrument. I'm only gonna give them a, a negative three because the way the cello is being used is like an upright bass. So for the bass, uh, I obviously can't give them a 10, but uh, there there is a bass line present here. So let's let's give them half points because cello is half the size of an upright bass. Play style, I do see some brute fifth stuff going on. I mean, the bass part's good, let's give it a 10. But I do see a banjo, banjo is present. It is not a bluegrass banjo. So let's give that like a maybe a seven or something. Let's walk that score back a little bit. But but the banjo is being played the roll pattern, right? Three finger Scruggs style banjo. So let's give that a 10. That's the first time we've seen that today. Hey, if you're playing rolls, you're gonna, you're gonna get some bennies. Man, for the sake of scoring this video, I wish that the finger snaps were just a mandolin chop so bad. If it was just a mandolin chop, we'd do better. I didn't even think about this. Yeah, he's got a real gruff voice. That's not really a bluegrass high lonesome sound, right? It's like one of the defining aspects of the genre. And I know that a tenor part comes in, right? It's a two part stack, so that makes sense. Let's just give him a low score. Let's give him a low score. Let's give him like a four. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. We got a boom chuck rhythm. I wish we had guitar in there or mandolin because I would, I feel like that would help out. I feel like those play styles, they'd be playing correctly. A repertoire, do I think this is a particularly bluegrassy song? It is kind of a bluegrassy song, weirdly enough. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't call it traditional bluegrass or anything, but I think it's bluegrassy enough for me to give them like a six. And presentation is a 10. Look at them in those nice suits and the hats. Um, we're gonna give them, we'll, we'll give them, how about 8% benefit? And that takes up 76%, uh, they get a C. That's my way of helping the Dead South a little bit. I'm not a huge Dead South fan or something. I just feel like they got, they got scored unfairly. <laughs> And there was no way we could do this video without including this one. All right. 
<laughs> we, we already got to do like a presentation deduction, right? I know, I know. We want to watch the video, but let's let's start where we got to start. So the presentation is the, all the overalls and stuff, and the hats, the coonskin hat. I'm sorry, it's just not bluegrass. You might think it's bluegrass, but it's not. It's like what the West Coast thinks the South is, and it's not. It's, it's not very PC. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Of course, yeah. So we got we got a bluegrass banjo. So uh, does the banjo exist? And is it a bluegrass banjo? Let's let's say ten. How about is he flat picking it though? Yes, he is, which is not bluegrass at all. So we got to give a two on playstyle. I'm so sorry. This upright bass bow thing, I'm not I'm not gonna be mad about yet. We're gonna we're gonna see if he goes to one five bass playing. We'll judge him on that. <laughs> Okay, if we'd stuck to the snare drum, I would have let it slide. But man, spoons, not bluegrass. I'm so sorry. I, I feel bad about this for some reason. But I got to tell you guys, bluegrass bands don't have spoon players. It's just not a real bluegrass thing. So we'll we'll pop in here with maybe like a, a negative five. Because I know that accordion's coming too. And yeah, I know Bill Monroe recorded this and that with an accordion way back when. Marcel, what are you doing? Accordions are bluegrass. We're not, we're not taking that loophole. <laughs> I see a mandolin, but it's got an oval hole. No. Okay, we'll 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 give it a five. We don't know how they're gonna play it yet. The accordion. We've already scored for that. We're fun. In the middle of a railroad track. Oh, no. <laughs> the anvil. I feel like I uh, I gotta feel like I gotta make a negative six now. It was negative five. Negative six for the other instrument point deduction. Is this a good time to remind you all that this stupid scoring system does not reflect on the quality of the music? You can enjoy this if you want to. I think it's kind of sick and funny, but <laughs> it's just not bluegrass. That's the whole point of this. I, was shaking at the knees. Could I, I see chop chords. I see chop chords. Let's give that mandolin player a 10. I heard the bass player doing root fifth. Let's give that a 10. Um, I don't think I see a guitar. No guitar is present, which is surprising to me. Repertoire, do I think this could be a cool bluegrass song? I kind of do think it could be a cool bluegrass song. I just wish we didn't have the anvil and the spoons and stuff. I wish we had a guitar player instead of a snare drum. So what are we gonna give that? What are we gonna give that? We can give that like a five maybe? I'll accept it, it's acceptable. It's the, it's the presentation being a full negative 10 just drags him down. This is only 18% bluegrass. The, the hillbilly cosplay, it just, just doesn't do it for me. It just, it ruins it for me. I'm sorry. Oh, y'all are gonna love this. Okay, let's talk about it. We do have we do have a bass present. It's an upright bass. It's playing root fifth. Can't argue that. Do we have a guitar present? We do. It's vaguely doing a boom chuck. I do know that there's a fiddle. Um, is it particularly bluegrass fiddle? I mean, I wouldn't say that either. Let's give it a seven. We're much closer. We're much closer than you think on Wagon Wheel. Headed down south to the land of the pines. I'm thumbing my way to North Carolina. Okay, so it's not ideal banjo playing. I'm gonna give that a five. I didn't see any finger picks. I mean, the vocal stacks are correct. I think the vocals are kind of straight toned. They're relatively, actually aren't that bad, um, like stylistically. Um, let's give it an eight. Presentation, I feel like we can do already. I'm gonna give presentation a 10 out of 10. They're all wearing suits. No instruments are out of place here. Fortunately, we don't have a mandolin. Repertoire, Wagon Wheel, I wouldn't say is a traditional bluegrass song in that Wagon Wheel works on a chord loop, right? We have this chord change that keeps repeating over and over again throughout all the verses, all the chorus. Normally bluegrass songs don't work like that. They have chord changes that kind to develop over a longer form. Wagon wheel is like an eight bar chord form. In a lot of standard bluegrass tunes, we see like a 16 bar chord change that doesn't repeat anywhere in there. Uh, so that's not really traditional, unfortunately. And of course, right, Wagon Wheel comes off of um, a Bob Dylan hook that he wrote and abandoned a long time ago. And Bob Dylan is not a bluegrass artist, so that doesn't, you know, shock me or insult me or anything. Um, so I'll put the, uh, the repertoire, I think we're gonna give him like a four out of 10, which means that Wagon Wheel at the end of the day gets 79% bluegrass. Wagon Wheel gets a C. It's still it's still not in the like, yes, it's bluegrass, you're succeeding category, but like Wagon Wheel is cusp on the <laughs> on the chart here, which blows my mind. 
I guess it's kind of interesting to like judge the purity of how bluegrass it is, even though it's such a stupid thing to do. Like what we're doing right now is stupid and it doesn't help anything. But it is kind of neat because you can find out kind of how the traditionalists think. You know, Wagon Wheel has quite a few of the things that you'd expect to see in bluegrass, but it doesn't quite deliver all the way. We can judge it right now. I'm done. So we got a bass. Bass is being played correctly. We got a guitar. It is not the ideal bluegrass guitar. We'll give it an eight. Um, but the guitar is being play, played correctly. We got a fiddle. Fiddle is being played correctly. Uh, the presentation is good. We're dressed like human beings. Repertoire, bang on. Pick and a pen, that's a bluegrass tune. Let's see how the vocals do. I got a pig home in a pig corn to feed him all horn. All I need is a pretty little gal to feed him when I'm gone. So our stack is right. We have someone that's slipping into falsetto to do kind of some of that tenor part, I think. That's not like a perfect win or anything, but it's really like stylistically like that's that's the direction. And there's a lot of people like Bill Monroe that used to go into this kind of like mixed voice or falsetto to hit some of those high notes. These guys aren't Bill Monroe. I mean, who's Bill Monroe? But that's the right direction, right? That's how it should work. I don't hear any bunch of vibrato or something like that. Let's give him an eight out of the vocals. That's our complete score. It's easy, right? When it is bluegrass, it's easy. This video gets an A. We didn't even make it to a chorus and we already know. Hey, this is bluegrass. Everybody get up. If you can. Okay, let's not even listen to any vocal yet. Um, there's a lot of things we can just judge immediately. We got a bluegrass banjo and it looks like that banjo is being played correctly. It's Greg style. Love it. Resonator, five string. I'm happy. We also got a fiddle player. Fiddle player is only playing backup right now, but they're using the chop. I'm going to believe the fiddle player knows what they're doing. We do have an upright bass player. So far, the upright bass player, I think, is playing things right. Doing row five. I believe in it. We do not have a guitar player in frame. We do have a piano player, which I'm going to say is uh, negative uh, two points. And then we do unfortunately have this snare drum, which would be just fine, but he's got a wood block and he's got a hi-hat. I think he's got a bass drum back there behind the upright bass. I, I gotta I gotta do more minus, right? We're gonna give minus five on that. The vocals are very idiosyncratic, kind of singing in a modern way. Um, that confuses me. I'm gonna give this maybe a four on the vocals. I don't think we're gonna get any harmony vocals. If we get gang vocals, God forbid, I don't wanna see it. Um, repertoire. Zero out of ten. This is not a bluegrass song. Let's keep watching just a little bit. Okay, now he was close, That's all I need to see. Um, the way she said domesticate you, I could tell, I could tell right now this isn't bluegrass. Presentation is going to be, I mean, everyone's wearing their flannels and then she's dressed up like, you know, knock off Daisy Duke. It's just not bluegrass. Why would you call it bluegrass? That isn't the thing. What do we give that? We give that a negative six. I think that's fair. They unfortunately are not going to receive any Marcel bonus points, which means our final video is 22% bluegrass with a final score of F. I was not swayed by your jean shorts. To maybe tie this thing up with a little bit of a, you know, a bow here at the end, what, what I just did, you know, in analyzing how bluegrassy these things are, isn't really that useful. The question we should be asking is, is this good music or music that I enjoy? And I suspect for some of those videos, you might have had different opinions, which is fine. You can like things that aren't bluegrass. <laughs> Verifying the percentage that something is or not bluegrass is, is kind of a silly thing to do. But I hope you can see in all the videos that we, that we watched how some of them were kind of scored lower or scored higher and then the one that scored perfectly there that uh that josh turner video i mean yeah you can really hear that that's bluegrass right you can hear that wagon wheels kind of close but then on the on the ones that are missed right you hear these hokey other things and you understand like ooh, yeah you know the ragtime piano doesn't really make sense in a bluegrass context uh <laughs> anyway i hope that this was enjoyable in some way and maybe Maybe you saw into the mind of the uh, traditional bluegrass music listener that, that may judge these things harder than they deserve to be judged. With any luck, this comment section won't turn out like the comment section on the Billy Strings video, which everyone now thinks that I'm some kind of hyper-traditionalist. I don't understand it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all. <laughs> anyway, y'all have a good one. I'll see you next time. Hey,